Yeah, what's happening? It's the big boss, Ricky Ross. And right now, I got to salute my brother, none other than Jeff Fox. Ricky Ross, M.I.A. Yo, we paying homage to a real nigga, DJ Jeff Fox, forever. The Jeff Fox Radio Show. show is friday night man we got so much stuff we got to get into here on the show today man lots of stuff going on you know brothers we got to be careful i'm gonna tell y'all all about it. we got a what i call a loaded potato coming up on the show today how you doing fish how you doing back there man you good all right all right man thank you everybody for tuning in make sure you share the show share it everywhere share the link share it to all your friends uh, we got lots to get into. We got some social justice stuff we got to talk about. Seriously, we're going to have to have a conversation. A little p- political, you know, just a little bit. You know, and of course, we are going to talk some sports as the NFL schedule has come out. You know, there are going to be some interesting matchups. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our boy Michael Jordan and the uh, last dance as Wow, all right, so make sure you share the show, like I said, and uh, Cash App to support the show, which is Radio Host One on the Cash App. You know, shout out to everybody, man, that showed love last week. Last week, man, y'all really showed love and sent your boy. Man, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean... They were pretty generous last week, Fish. Yeah, they showed love, man. So uh, make sure you go to uh, www.repyourcitytv.com. We are the number one streaming network. That's right. In South Florida and around the world, number one streaming television network, uh, Rep Your City TV. You can find us on your Roku TV. You can find us on your Amazon Fire TV uh your apple tv you can find us on film on which is worldwide so i don't care where you are in the world you can watch the jeff fox show right here and uh big things are going on first thing of course uh we're gonna get into is fish we had the uh we had a con uh, not a conviction we won the conviction but we had an arrest in the uh murder case out there in georgia and by the way, happy birthday to Ahmad Arbery, the young man that was murdered in in uh, in Georgia. And uh, it's tough to talk about, man, because we've seen this so many times, man. Trayvon, Martin, Freddie Gray, you know, uh, it just goes on and on. Philando Castile, the names go on and on and on. Michael Brown and Ferguson, I'm just sick of it. And I know you guys are too, man. But happy birthday to Ahmad Arbery as he um, gets a little bit of justice today as his murderers were arrested. And uh, CNN had a report in which uh, Benjamin Crump, very well-known civil rights attorney, along with Ahmad's father, were interviewed on CNN. Here's the clip. Breaking overnight, a father and son have been charged with murder for the shooting death of an unarmed man, Ahmaud Arbery, while he was apparently on a jog in Georgia. 
This is new video you're looking at right now of authorities taking the two men into custody just hours before what would have been Ahmad's 26th birthday. Joining us now is Ahmad's father, Marcus Arbery Sr., and family attorney, Benjamin Crump. Uh, Mr. Arbery, first of all, I know it's been 10 weeks, but I'm sure that doesn't make it any easier. Let me just say we're so sorry for the loss of your son, and I want to know your reaction to the fact that these two men have been taken into custody and charged in his death. Yes, sir. I just, well, I just want justice for my son. I just want them to uh, pay the price to the poor uh, they crying they did. The news that they were taken into custody after 10 weeks. How did you feel when you heard that news? It took a, a lot of release off our family because we just was devastating these killers like this in the do or nation Lynching them all that, that to a young man, and they were still walking around here free. It was just devastating our family. You just used the word lynching. You have called this a modern day lynching. What do you mean by that? Because it's, 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 a, it's a clear shot of lynching. Anytime you pursue the young man, you go jump in a truck with shotguns and, and a pistol and, and, and jump in a truck and you go jump on the back of a truck and follow him and and, and, and slaughter him like that, that's, that's lynching. Counselor, um, this video that was released that shows Ahmad apparently jogging through this neighborhood, our Martin Savage has reported this was in police hands in the days after the incident, yet it has taken 10 weeks, basically, to press charges. What do you think has taken so long? Well, I believe it wasn't because they saw the video that they arrested this murderous duo because they had the video on day one. It is because we saw the video and we demanded justice for this modern day lynching in 2020 that the Georgia Bureau of Investigations finally arrested these killers so they would not continue to sleep in their, their beds every night peacefully. What does it tell you, though, that they had this video and didn't press charges? It tells you that we have two justice systems in America, one for black America and one for white America. And until we can become the United States of America, where we respect everybody's life, where Ahmaud Arbery could get the same justice as if the roles were reversed and it was him and his father in a truck with a shotgun and a 357 Magnum and killed Greg McMichael's son in broad daylight because we know without a shadow of a doubt they would have been arrested on day one. And so we want the same justice for Ahmaud Arbery. America, it is 2020, mm -hmm. not 1920. Counselor, uh, Ahmaud's mother said that she had originally been told that her son was shot by a homeowner in the midst of a burglary. Now, there, there's no evidence of that. And to be clear, you know, we in USA Today have called the neighborhood. There were no evidence of burglaries having been reported in the neighborhood in the weeks before that at all. But what does it tell you that that is what she was told by the police? It tells you that the police have a relationship, apparently, with Greg McMichaels, who was a former police officer and detective with the DA for 30 years, and that we don't trust anybody in that southeastern legal community because they have a bias towards the McMichaels. So, um, again, man, it's a, a tough day for the people out there in Glen County and people in Brunswick. Tough, tough day, absolutely all the way around. Ahmad Arbery would have turned 26 years old uh, today, and his family had to deal with this this tragedy and this uh, this BS. And as you can see, his father really shaking up. Uh, ben Crump, he's been through this before. Trayvon Martin and so many other people. Um, they did have a rally today, though, to celebrate the fact that the uh, McMichaels were arrested, Greg and Travis McMichael arrested, denied bond today, and they're, uh, you know, 
as we try to get justice in this case they were denied bond and uh, they had a rally today at the Glen County Magistrate here's a little clip of that good morning good morning we are here today for one reason and one reason only because Ahmad Aubrey was killed in cold blood and because of that we are standing together with this community with this family to demand that not only justice be served, but his life be honored. Yes. The way we honor that life is a many of ways. One, we saw yesterday evening that the murderers of Ahmad Aubrey was arrested. As we celebrate the arrest, let us be very clear, however, that justice still is not done. We will continue to fight. We will continue to stand together. We will continue to demand that the district attorney in this judicial circuit resign immediately. We will also demand that George Barnhill resign because he said that those murderers were justified. So before we get started today, we have a very simple ask of each and every one of you. That will you continue to call the district attorney and demand she resign? That is James Woodard, leader of the NAACP out there in uh, Brunswick. James Woodard of the MC NAACP speaking right there as they had a rally and a celebration for his birthday, sort of, for, um, of course, Ahmad Arbery. One thing you gotta remember, folks, this is just an arrest. We've seen this movie before. Nothing to celebrate here. Nothing to celebrate. Yeah, he's been arrested, they've been arrested, rather, but you want convictions. You know, I remember the Trayvon Martin thing, man. It hit me in my gut. The whole George Zimmerman decision hit me in my gut. I was disgusted because I have a son. He's 16 years old. And when the Zimmerman thing went down, I thought about my son. And I want justice for all of these brothers, these young brothers that are getting murdered by the cops and murdered by these vigilante uh, racist uh white folks out there that just feel like pretty much they feel like they can take justice in their hands. They can just come, hey man, you know, stop, you know, whoever you are, whatever you're doing, you know, they could just bum rush you and shoot you. And pretty much as in this situation, man, the only reason we have an arrest today, uh, the only reason is we saw the video. We saw the video. That's the only reason this thing came to an arrest. They've had that video for two months. What took so long? You know, what took so long? They had the video for two months. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. It's got to stop. I'm sick of it. Someone else is sick of it, and I want to give some props, fish, to, um, I want to give some props to Anquan Bolden, former NFL player, and Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, that Tom Brady. They wrote a letter to the uh, folks in Georgia. How about that? Anquan Bolden, Tom Brady, uh, Stan Van Gundy, uh, a whole lot of professional athletes. Uh, who are just sick and tired of the bullshit. Seriously. They wrote a letter. And I appreciate that. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. They they wrote a letter to the authorities. They're calling for, you know, for people to, to, to be um, fired and resign and all that stuff. Because they've had enough. They see it. And I'm glad that we had Tom Brady in there. We had a, a member of the Miami Dolphins, uh, former Dolphin, Troy Vincent, uh, ex-heat coach Stan Van Gundy, 
Uh, all of these folks, they wrote the Attorney General of the United States, William Barr, on Friday. And this was signed by dozens of sports figures. And they want these they want answers, basically. Anquan Bolden played in the NFL for a lot of years. Quite a few teams, including the 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens. His cousin was murdered right here in Florida. Did you know that, Fish? No. That was his cousin. They got murdered. They broke down on the turnpike. That was Anquan Bolden's cousin. Wow. And during the Super Bowl that we just had here in Miami, uh, the NFL released a video that was put together by the players, including Anquan Bolden, talking about the NFL trying to get social justice for all these players. That's, you know, the whole Colin Kaepernick thing. They're trying to make themselves look good, but I applaud them. You know what I mean, Fish? I applaud them for what they've done. And Anquan Bolden, again, Anquan speaking out, and uh, he, he appeared on, uh, I think it was the uh, Today Show a couple months ago, right before all of this stuff happened. And he talked about it on television. Here's a clip. Yeah, I'll never forget that night. My wife walks up after the game. He told me that my cousin Corey had been killed. In a new attention-grabbing PSA. All you hear from there is three shots. Former NFL star wide receiver Anquan Bolden recalls the 2015 death of his cousin Corey Jones. I need to know why. Why is my son gone today? Why? The 31-year-old musician was killed by a plainclothes police officer after his car broke down on the side of a Florida interstate late one night. That officer was later convicted of attempted murder and manslaughter. I think far too long we've avoided the conversation, and I think by avoiding that conversation, we are where we are now. But I think anytime you bring a situation to light, you have the ability to deal with it. Tough times don't last, tough people do. Now the NFL unveiling an entire series of ads called Inspire Change. I want to use my platform to speak out for people who can't speak out for themselves. Addressing a host of issues affecting disadvantaged and largely minority populations. Public reaction to the campaign has been swift and incredibly split. Some fans saying this was such a powerful PSA and a tough subject handled in a classy and very effective way. Others criticizing what they see as hypocrisy. This is so fake on every level. Why wasn't Kaepernick 7 kneeling a part of this commercial if this is a topic that you truly care about? That reference to former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick, who set off a national firestorm when he took a knee during the national anthem in 2016 to protest social injustice and police brutality. Did the NFL handle it right? Initially, I don't think so. Everyone should stand for the national anthem. Overnight, the NFL telling NBC News in a statement, we are aware of the challenges we faced over the last few years. Adding, this PSA is a signature spot we hope will really bring clarity to what social justice is and how committed NFL players are to these issues. But I do applaud the NFL for taking a stand and listening to the players and trying to address it. The league now trying to advance the ball. Back to the Jeff Fox Show, Rep Your City TV. Um, talking social justice tonight on a Friday. When we should be partying and having a good time and listening to our DJs and talking sports. I promise we'll get to the sports stories. But I would be failing you as a, as a media person. I'd be failing you. If I didn't bring your attention <clears throat> to what's going on in this country, we're being hunted. It's been going on a long time, Fish. It's been going on for a long time. Anquan Bolden just told you about his cousin who was murdered here in Florida. That was before Ahmad Arbery, Arbery was, was hunted down like a wild animal and murdered by these two white guys who... who they're not even the police. They, they just, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you heard the 911 call. No. They were like, there's a black man running down the street. Whoa. Whoa. It's a black man running down the street. That's a crime. The 911 operator said, what'd he do? What's he doing? Well, he's running down the street. Okay. 
I mean, enough of this already. Trayvon went to get some Skittles. You know what I mean? Sandra Bland got pulled over for a broken taillight. Uh, my man in New York. Uh, I can't breathe. You guys in the chat room, you can tell me. You know, he he got he got killed for selling loose cigarettes. Look at the reasons we're dying. Look at the reasons. It's ridiculous. You know, and I got another one for you folks. That's going to really make you sick. All of this stuff has been happening in the last few weeks since 45 has been up there, you know, with all the rhetoric. Not only do we have to deal with this coronavirus and and fighting to stay alive. Yeah, he's, he's the one up there talking about they're good people and all this other bull. But now we got to worry about being hunted, being murdered for the smallest things. Tamir Rice was in a park with a toy. Walter Scott was running away and got shot in the back. Come on, man. Enough already. And this next video is really going to make you sick. I hope it's going to be on my fucking, um, what is this? What the, what the fuck is this? 41 years old, uh, who was in the military, Sean Reed. I saw it today, man, and, and, uh, I think they shot this guy, this kid, like 13, 14 times. And then they laughed about it. They laughed about it. There's going to be another open casket funeral. I, I, it, clearly, these black lives don't mean anything to these people. Watch the video yourself, man. This is a young man. He went live on Facebook as he's being chased by the cops. And he's kind of, he sounded like he was either drunk or high or whatever. But still, it's not a reason to die and get shot multiple times. Here's the video. I hope it's going to be on my fucking, um, what is this? What the, what the fuck is this? Is this Michigan? Come on. How the fuck? What street is this? I'm finna park this motherfucker to get the fuck out. Oh baby. Oh baby, what's this? Michigan and what? Michigan and what? Ace? I'm finna park this motherfucker at eight. On mid 62nd in Michigan? Somebody come get my stupid ass. Please come get me. Please come get me. Please go get me. I'm on 62nd in Michigan. I just parked this motherfucker. I'm gone. Please come get me. You hear the gunshots. Pow, 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 pow. They're not trying to injure him. They're trying to kill him. I mean, is that a reason to die? Is that, is it? You see how trivial and meaningless his life was to them? As he laid on the ground dying, they laughed about an open casket funeral. All of this is happening around the country. This is in Indianapolis. Then you got the situation in Georgia. Then you got another situation in North Carolina, you know, where a young man and his mom was at home. I don't have any video on this one, but I can tell you about it. And a vigilante of gun-wielding, you know, uh, white men rolled up to his house, knocked on the door. They were with a sheriff who was off duty at the time. And he put his foot in the door and wouldn't leave because they opened the door and said, look, I'm not leaving. Looking for somebody. Just question him. Like, when did everybody become the police? When did everybody white become the police? You could just form a posse and run after black people and shoot black people. 
All of this is going on now. In Indianapolis, there's racial tension. In Georgia, there's racial tension. And I want people to remember the name Sean Reed. Yeah, he was acting a fool, but you're 21. You can act a fool at 21. He wasn't hurting anyone. They wanted to kill him for running away. There was a protest in Indianapolis today. It made the local news up there. Uh, Indianapolis TV had it. And uh, look at the protests have started up there, too. Here's a video. You know, we just are seeing people showing up right now. They're holding signs that say justice for Sean Reed. We are expecting more people in the next few minutes here to show up for this protest. We know this was organized by D. Rose, who is an activist on the east side of Indianapolis. Do you want to come over here and tell me what you're here for this morning? I'm here to protest for Stand Sean Stand right here Reed. in front of the microphone. Oh. That's okay. I'm here to protest for Sean Reed because he was murdered by the police. And they keep saying that he had a gun on him and that he shot the police. They can't even get their story together. Like, y'all can't even get your story together. First, why would you tase him if you were in danger for your life and you're a police officer? Why would you tase him if you thought he had a gun? Why would you tase him? Why wouldn't you yell gun? You didn't hear nothing in that video. Him say gun, gun, nothing. All you heard was him tase him. He saw him go to the ground. He said the tase was not effective. How was it not effective? We all saw it. 30,000 people saw it. We saw him drop to the ground, and then all you heard was 18 shots. And then he shot him two more times after he was already on the ground. You shot him, and he couldn't even get up. You shot an innocent man. You shot him because he ran from you? Was it worth it? Was it worth his life because he ran from you? That's sick. Remember his name, Sean Reed. Please, please, just tell your family or friends. Keep them close, bro. Black lives matter. They matter. So many people keep dying for this. Please, please, tell everybody, bro. Remember his name, please. That's all I ask, remember his name. Don't forget his name. So you can see emotions are running very high in this situation. We are expecting more protesters to gather as we head into the afternoon hours. You can see that there is a lot of tension surrounding this. And again, this is addressing the shooting. There was two police shootings that happened overnight. This is addressing the one that happened earlier in the evening, right around 62nd and Michigan. And we know that one person was fatally shot there. We are going to continue to follow the story as it develops. For now, I'll send it back to you in the studio. We're being hunted like prey. Shot multiple times. We've seen it before. Over and over and over and over again. And I know you're sick of it because I know I'm sick of it. It's almost as if your life just really doesn't matter. And you still got people who are wondering why do they have a black ma uh, lives matter. You still got people wondering about this. You still got people that want to call out people like LeBron James uh, for bringing it up. You still got people that support those racist guys in Georgia, the Mike Michaels. Do you know the, how much money they've raised already? You know they got Facebook groups that support them? for murdering Ahmaud Arbery. So right now, you're dealing with Sean Reed in Indianapolis. You're dealing with Arbery in Georgia. You're dealing with that situation in North Carolina. You know, you had another situation in Minnesota where a motorist, it's just, just a regular uh, fender bender, traffic stop, black guy, bumps into the white guy. Black guy's about 40 years old. Happened in Minnesota, and um, they had some words. White guy said, hey, man, I saw him reach under his shirt. I fear for my life. Boom, 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 boom. Dead black man in Minnesota this week. All of this stuff is going on right now. And now we're walking around with masks on, trying to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. What do we have to wear to protect ourselves from these racist white people? What do we got to do? Ahmaud Arbery basically got killed because he was black. They're afraid of us. Yeah. They ran up in the, uh, I'm telling you, man, it's a different America. And 45 says they're good people. You're right, Fish. He says they're good people.
How many more? I mean, there's so many names. Sean Bell in New York City. There's so many names on that Black Lives Matter list. It's growing every day. So what are you supposed to do? Are you, are you going to keep turning the other cheek? Slap me here, slap me here, kick me here, kick me there. I mean, I, I don't have the answers. I'm just reporting the news. But I know I'm sick of it. And I know, I'm a 16-year-old son in my house, man. And I'll be down. I'll be down if I'm going to be crying on CNN. I, I ain't going to do it. You know, I promised a friend of mine I ain't going to get too radical. And I, and, and I don't want to get too radical, Fish. I, I'm just telling you how I feel, man. Like, like, you know, this ain't right. It ain't right. And I don't feel like marching and demonstrating and singing We Shall Overcome. I ain't with that. I ain't with that. And a lot of us, this, this is not 1960. Don't be fooled, people. Don't be fooled. I remember, you know, when the Trayvon thing happened uh-huh. at a Winn-Dixie on, on uh, I, talk, I told this story on the radio, at a Winn-Dixie on Biscayne Boulevard, um, I was in the, uh, the, the line where you can only have 10 items. Yeah. White lady, where's the manager? Where's the manager? He's got more than 10 items. I mean, made a big deal about it. And I said, I mean, I, I kind of went off on her. And I was a bit embarrassed because I was raised better than that. But I had to give her a few F-bombs. Yeah. And she's quite older than me. Yeah. But she thought she could check me for being in a line where you're only supposed to have 10 items. Come on. Come on, man. I mean, that's what... That's what's going on in this country. If you do anything wrong and you're black, there's a chance you can get killed. You can get killed for existing. Just for being black, you can get killed for existing. I, I don't know, man. This is what's going on in this country. Did you see the um, lawmakers in Michigan where the uh, where all the white guys with the guns ran up in the state you know, uh, protesting, and Donald Trump and, and Donald Trump said they're very, well, well. They're very good people. Maybe the governor should negotiate with them. They're fine people. They're up there with guns and stuff, scaring the hell out of everybody. You got people in the state capitol wearing uh, bulletproof vests and stuff. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened to the Panthers. Um, we need the Black Panthers. Something changed, man. And you had this situation. Like I told you about Michigan. Well, somebody started to do something a little bit about it. You had a Michigan lawmaker on her way to work. This is after the whole thing with those folks running up in the state capitol and everything with the weapons. She said, you know what? I'm scared. I don't want to get shot by no angry white man. I'm going to get me some brothers. They're going to get some guns, and y'all want me to work. And that's what she did. She rolled up in the Capitol on her way to work, and she was escorted by about six or seven black brothers and a couple of Latino guys. Uh, And here's a clip of her talking about it. These images show a group of armed men and women escorting Representative Sarah Anthony to the Capitol Wednesday. It did bring some comfort um, just to know that folks out there have my back. Representative Anthony welcomes their presence. She says she grew fearful after protesters legally brought guns inside the Capitol last week. There was something that triggered, you know, extreme fear in myself as a woman, as an African-American woman, just as a legislator. These gun-wielding community activists say they're here to ease that fear. We came together and decided we needed to do something about that. They're calling on lawmakers to stop people from carrying weapons inside the Capitol. It can only be used for one thing, intimidation. What else are you carrying a gun in there for? We reached out to Republican Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky. A spokesperson for his office tells us, quote, the House and Senate have their own police force in the form of the sergeants and Michigan State Police are stationed in the building. The majority leader feels these men and women do an excellent job of ensuring safety of legislators and staff. We're in a public health crisis, and the last thing we need to be debating is whether we feel safe in our workplace to do the work of the people. 
Yep. Y'all want to walk up there with guns? We can do it too. We can do it too. Kudos to her. Kudos to her. You know, I mean, I had to hit the sound effect on that, man, and, and, and wake my studio audience up because that's what you got to do. You got to meet force with force, man. You can't keep, you, you just can't keep getting slapped around and shot and walked over. You know, it, it just can't keep happening. It can't keep happening. I bet Donald Trump won't say that those brothers that escorted that young lady to work to help better people's lives. I bet he won't call those brothers very fine people. I bet he won't say that. But you know, you got these angry people spitting at you and cursing and, and mad because you're trying to protect them. But they're very fine people. She should negotiate with them. Speaking of which, this dude, man, up there in Pennsylvania Avenue, is that what it's called? I don't even know. 45. I don't, lying. Yeah. Lying. <laughs> this coronavirus, we got worried about the virus and we got worried about getting shot. And then this dude is handling this uh, coronavirus situation like a real clown. Like a real clown. And they're about to open up everything, Fish. They're about to open up the malls. The beaches are open. I think on this coming Monday in Miami, the barbershops, the beauty salons, they're all open. I still have my mask. I still have my gloves. I'm social distancing. I'm trying to keep my... They better not open the schools. We're going out there with the mics. Yeah. We're going to hit the streets next week. But we're going to be six feet from whoever we talk to. Because I ain't trying to be like... I ain't trying to get that. I ain't trying to get it, man. What Cardi B say? <laughs> I ain't trying to get that, man. But 45, man, you've been lying to us from the beginning. And I think it was MSNBC that put together a nice little collage of Donald Trump and his lies from day one of this situation with the coronavirus. Here it is. We have to get our country open, Jeff. Can you say, sir, what metrics you will use to make that decision? Uh, the metrics right here. That's my metrics. That's all I can do. Worries about a pandemic at this point? No, we're not at all, and uh, we're we have it totally under control. It's one person. We think we have it very well under control. Like by April, you know, in theory, when it gets a little warmer, it miraculously goes away. When it gets warm, uh, historically, that has been able to kill the virus. That's around the corner, so that will be a great thing. The numbers are going to get progressively better as we go along. If you go back six months or. Three months ago, nobody would have ever predicted. When you have 15 people, and the 15 within a couple of days is going to be down to close to zero, uh, that's a pretty good job we've done. No, I don't think it's inevitable. I don't think it's inevitable. They say, oh, he should do more. Well, there's nothing more you can do. We haven't seen an increase, and people are getting better. Almost everybody that we see is getting better. And it could be everybody, too. The Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. They can't even count their votes in Iowa. They tried the impeachment hoax, and this is their new hoax. But, you know, we did something that's been pretty amazing. We're 15 people in this massive country. The press is in hysteria mode. CNN, fake news, and their camera just went off. Unfortunately, one person passed away overnight. Since the early stages of the foreign outbreak, my administration has taken the most aggressive action in modern history. That really turned out to be a, a, a lifesaver, in a sense, a big lifesaver. Some people will have this at a very light level and won't even go to a doctor or a hospital. They'll get better. Anybody that needs a test gets a test. We, they're there. They have the test. And the tests are beautiful. The tests are all perfect. The transcription was perfect. And we're doing a great job with it, and it will go away. Just because of what I did and what the administration did with China, we have 32 deaths at this point. 
Other countries that are smaller countries have many, many deaths. It's a very contagious virus. It's uh, incredible. But it's something that we have uh, tremendous control of. You're talking about the virus? No, that's not under control for any place in the world. I think I read. I think I read. No, I didn't. I was talking about what we're doing is under control. But I'm not talking about the virus. And I've always known this is a, this is a real. This is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. We have very great approval numbers. I mean, people like the job that we're doing. And, uh, the only thing we weren't prepared for was the uh, the media. The media has not treated it fairly. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Right. I think it's a very nasty question. I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens, John. A month ago, the CDC had an initial test that failed. At that moment, late February, you said it's perfect, and, and it wasn't perfect. Well, what I said in late February, what I said it's perfect was my conversation with the head of the Ukraine. That's what I really said is perfect. Okay, that was another whole scandal, nonsense, a total, you know, witch hunt. But nobody ever expected a thing like this. We got to get back to work, and I think we can start by opening up certain parts of the country. On Easter, we probably, they, well, that could be a peak. That could be a peak period. That could be the peak. Sadly to say, that could be the peak number of deaths before it starts coming down do that this is going to be gone it'll be gone hopefully gone for a long time what do you have to lose i'll say it again what do you have to lose take it i really think they should take it hydroxy chloroquine try it if you'd like I mean, did anybody in this room think a thing like this could happen but it happened they don't have to appreciate me at all i don't care about me i wish you'd ask the question differently why don't you say it's gotten off to a tremendous start but there were some little glitches which by the way have been worked out i wish we had a fair media in this country and we really don't speaking of unfair go ahead we have to get our country open jeff you say sir what metrics you will use to make that decision uh the metrics right here that's my metrics. That's all I can do. But there's always a risk. This is, a, this is genius that we're fighting. You know, we're fighting this hidden enemy, which is genius, okay? It's genius. The way it's attacked so many countries. All I'm saying is this. How do you close down the greatest economy in the history of the world when on January 17th you have no cases and no death? When on January 21st, you have one case and no death. One case. Think of that. What we inherited from the previous administration was totally broken. We inherited broken testing. Now we have great testing. Like today, I'm instructing my administration to halt funding of the World Health Organization. I was angry because it should have been told to us. It should have been told to us early. It should have been told to us a lot sooner. People knew it was happening, and people didn't want to talk about it. The head of a country doesn't have to say, stay in. These people are smart people. Nobody ever thought this could have happened, a thing like this. We inherited a lot of garbage. We took, uh, they had tests that were no good. They had, all this stuff was no good. Okay, mate, it might not come back at all, Jeff. It may not come back at all. We will have coronavirus in the fall. I am convinced of that. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me i'm not a doctor but i'm like a person that has a good you know what uh, yeah you suck 45 you suck you know out there just lying to the people man lying to the people and you know what i love man i love the fact that you got the people on Fox on one side. Oh, he can't do anything wrong. And then you got MSNBC and CNN on the left. And my boy, Don Lemon, came for the prayers earlier this week. And the Internet is undefeated, as you know, Fish. Yeah. They put together one of the great diss records in uh, hip-hop history to a little bit of Don Lemon talking. Because, because... Because, let me, let me tell you, because uh, 45 can't stop talking about Barack Obama. Like, he's blaming, is he blaming the virus on Obama? Like, what's, <laughs> is, you know, 
is it Obama's fault? Like Obama left you with an epidemic committee or something, and you you disbanded it, and then you just told all those lies that I just showed you guys, like just just lies. You know, well, the previous administration, Obama, 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 he's not Obama. You know, then Don Lemon came for him, and they put a little hip-hop in it. I like this. Check it out. What is it about President Obama that really gets under your skin? Is it because he's smarter than you? Better educated? Made it on his own? Didn't need daddy's help? Wife is more accomplished? Better looking. I don't know. What is it? What is it about him? That he's a black man that's accomplished. Game president. That he punked you on the whole birth certificate thing. What is it about him? Just wondering. Lemon, you shouldn't have did it to him, man. Don't do it like that. Don't do it like that. Uh, enough of the crazy news, man, the craziness. Folks, we got to do better, man. As a country, we got to do better. As people, we got to do better. And um, it is what it is. You're watching the Jeff Fox Show right here on Rebel City TV. Remember, tell everybody about us, man. Uh, share the links wherever you are. Share the links. Support us. At uh, the Cash App with Radio Host One is the Cash App Radio Host One. Show some love, and of course you can share the links. You can check us out Repping City TV on your Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, uh, worldwide on Film on TV. We're going to be everywhere. We're just getting this thing started, just building a network, and we need your help. Uh, please help us support us right here on the Jeff Fox Show. On Rep Your City TV. When we come back, Michael Jordan. We're going to talk about him and a football player, an NFL player, cheating on his wife. Mm-mm-mm. We'll talk about that more next. Jeff Fox Show. <laughs> How you doing? This is George Raymond and Edward Raymond, owners here at ER Custom Automotive, 7110 Northwest 6th Court, right here in Miami, Florida. We've been here since 1986, 35 years. I think we're doing something right. What makes us different from the rest of the shops is our customer service and our detail to work. Give us a shot. Check us out online at ercustom.com and watch out for our merchandise. Right here in the 305, ER Custom Automotive.
say she me, Joe. I guess she say she me, Joe. I guess she say she want you. I guess she say she want you. Late night she be on you. Late night she be on you. So what you gon' do? That she's a thotty. You know that she's a thotty. She catching major body. She catching major body. She out here popping Molly. She out here popping Molly. She acting like her mommy. She acting like her mommy. <laughs> Dumb nigga. One, 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 two, then look back. 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 Shout out to Sam Sneak and the boys. Major Nine doing the one, two. Shout out to the boys. Yeah. I like that 305 music, man. I miss the round table. You know, uh, I want to thank uh, those of you that's been watching on Facebook Live. Thank you. Hey, Sean Trail. How you doing, baby? Uh, thank you to uh, DJ RJ. He's in there as well. Does a great show. Annette Whitfield, she's in there. Uh, Mimi is up in there. Happy birthday. I think you had a recent birthday not too long ago. So shout out to you folks uh, for being in there. Um, Fish, I don't know if you watched any of the ESPN Michael Jordan Last Dance. I've been on Jordan's case a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. And the Jordanaires have come for me. It's like when you talk about Beyonce and the Beyonce people come for you. The, the Jordan people come for you. And I got a little, you know, I watched the thing last week. Michael Jordan um, and Horace Grant been going through a little something, something. It seems as if Jordan told the flight attendants back then in the old days when they were winning championships, you know, Horace didn't play too good today. Don't feed him. We're talking about a grown man on a plane with the team. He told the uh, flight attendant, don't feed him. He don't eat because he played bad. And I'm like, what kind of grown man let somebody else tell you whether you could eat or not? It's crazy. And um, this really happened. 
Sports Illustrator had the story. I read it. Sam Smith is the author. He said it really happened. Jordan told Horace Grant, a grown-ass man, that he don't eat because he played like shit. That's basically what it came down to. So because you play bad, Horace Grant, you don't get to eat. And, and Horace Grant saw this, saw them on TV talking about it, and he called Shannon Sharp and basically told Shannon Sharp the truth. Here it is. I called him back. I said, what's up, Ho? He said, hey, Sharp, how you doing? So we start talking, Skip. He, I'm from I'm from rural South Georgia. He grew up in Sparta, Georgia, which is more middle Georgia. We're about two, a little over two hours apart from each other. So I'm very familiar with Har- with Horace Grant and where he grew up and he and his brother. So we start talking. I say, okay, bro, shoot me straight. What's going on with this deal? I mean, Mike said you can't eat, lot, lot, lot. He said, Sharp, I'm telling you 100%. That did happen. Say there's the uh, the flight attendants, they're serving us, and he touches the flight attendant and says, hey, he doesn't eat because he played like poop. And Ho said he stood up and said, F you, Mike. So he went back to confront Mike, one of his teammates, if I'm not mistaken, Skip, he said it was Brad Sellers. He said, nah, G, don't worry about it. It's not worth it. He said uh, there have been t- there are several times that he and Mike almost came to blows. He told me that it started from the day he got there, that Mike started this, what we would term bullying, from the very first moment that he walked in. So they always had heated practice. There was always a source of contention with him and Mike. And he told me, Skip, he said, Mike, this is the way Mike was. If you did not confront Mike, he would ride you every day, all day, all the time. He said, you had to stand up for yourself. He said, really, the only the only person that Mike didn't do that to was you know who, and the guy you know who is, is number 34, Charles Oakley. Uh, Horace said that he and Charles still speak to this day. He and Charles are very good friends. He said, but he had a problem. He said, I didn't have a problem with Mike, the player. I just had a problem with Mike trying to motivate me to get me to do my job. And he said, no, nah, that wasn't going to happen. He says, I did speak up for myself. There were several times that I tried to, that I was going to confront Mike and put my hands on Mike. He said, Skip, they asked him about this in the video. He said, Sharp, I looked dead into the camera. I said, Mike didn't want to see me then, then, and he damn sure doesn't want to see me now. They cut that out. He says, there's some other... Skip. Well, damn, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Oh, if I could be like Mike. Damn, Mike, he couldn't eat. You don't want a man to eat because he had a bad game? I mean, I ain't trying to tear down Mike, but Mike knew, Michael Jordan knew that he was going to look really bad when this documentary came out because he talked about it. He said, a lot of folks are going to think that I'm a bad guy because he's beefing with everybody. You know, and and I want to make a point, Fish. The great athletes, Jerry Rice, Michael Jordan, Dan Marino, Tom Brady, Kobe Bryant, they're not the best teammates. They will fuss at you. They will curse you out. They 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 want to bring out the best in you. So they're going to tell you about your ass pretty much. But Mike, Mike don't want you to eat. You know, and then Horace kind of, you know, I was wondering when the Orlando Magic beat the Bulls back in the day. And Horace Grant was playing for the Magic, and they beat Michael Jordan and them. I was wondering why Horace Grant was celebrating like a mofo. He was like just, whoo, thank you, Jesus. We beat him, we beat him, we beat him, we beat him. He had left the Bulls and went to the Magic. And he was over-celebrating, and everybody wondered why. I don't think Horace Grant likes Michael Jordan very much. I don't think he likes him very much. And the thing that came out of the ESPN documentary, Mike may not be such a likable guy outside of the commercials. He's a great competitor. He's fierce. He will take your heart out and don't give a damn. And Mike... 
I mean, if you watch that ESPN documentary, Mike, Mike don't like nobody. Like, if you ain't on it, you're not doing it his way, he don't like you. And ESPN did a little clip, which I found very funny. Of all the people, if you're watching The Last Dance, that Michael Jordan had a problem with. Here it is. Now, we couldn't catch every petty reference he made over the first six hours of the series. There are just too many, but we decided to compile some of the best. Take a look. Oh, I hated him. And yeah, he carries even to this day. I'm talking about the walk-off. Well, I know this whole There's no way you can convince me he would. I'm gonna tell you, take it. Sure. Look that deal. You got my ear. You can't smoke it. It's such a joke. I felt like Scotty was being selfish. It's not an equal opportunity offense. That's cool. I just had to go back to all the way in the corner with y'all ass. Dennis Rodman. Oh, my. Hey, one, 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 one. hey, don't say that on camera, yo. He submitted to one girl. Am, am, come on. A hey, am. He's a lot. He's a lot. He's out every night. I wasn't a Phil Jackson fan, you know, when he first came in, you know, because he, he was coming in and take the ball out of my hands. When Dennis wants to tell me something, I knew it's not something that I don't want to hear. There was so many times the text used to yell at me, saying, move the ball, move the ball. This is no iron team. It's an iron win. Clyde was a threat. You know, I'm not saying he wasn't a threat. But me being compared to him, I, I took offense to that. How you like that ass kicking we gave you? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, now. And that was Horace. He was telling everything that was happening within the group. I knew that Jerry Krause loved Dan Martin. And just because Krause liked him was enough for me. You think he's a great defensive player? OK, fine. I'm sure that he's not. You know, they had Craig Elon on me at the time, which, you know, honestly was a mistake. Pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elon. The Bulls win! They win! Get the f out of here. Get go f anywhere, but you out of here. Whoever's not with us, all you f go to hell. Uh, Michael, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan. I guess you don't want to be like Mike now, huh? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be like Mike now. Mike, Mike will come for you, man. Mike will cut your heart out. You know he's not he's not uh, a very friendly guy, not a very friendly guy. And that's it's like that with the competitors. It's like that with the great ones. They expect everybody to be great, and um, you know everybody's not going to be like you. Everybody didn't like Kobe. Kobe and Shaq didn't get along. Remember that. And Reggie Jackson and Billy Martin, and it goes on and on and on. Great teams don't always get along. We saw that with Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, you know, the whole thing. Um, you know who else made the news this week? Ooh. Earl Thomas from the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Cheating on his wife, and she came for him with her friends. Yeah, a woman scorned when a woman's fed up in real life. Earl Thomas had a gun put to his head. A gun with a bullet in it by his wife, cheating on her. And um, I got a little snippet of how it all went down. I mean, TMZ ran the story. And he's got a beautiful wife. Nice looking. But maybe it's not a beautiful light. I don't know. Him and his brother had a little sex party with a bunch of hoes. Seriously, man, she went looking for him. She tracked him down with the, uh, was it Snapchat? She used something to find out where he was because he came home, I think a little intoxicated. And this is according to TMZ. And she got pissed off and he called his brother and they left. And then he went and got some hoes. Then he went and got an air and B. I mean, here's the story right here. It's wild, man. What would you do if you found your partner in bed with another person or people? Ooh. According to TMZ, this Baltimore Ravens star Earl Thomas had a loaded gun pointed at his head by his wife uh, after she allegedly caught him naked 
in bed at an Airbnb with several women. Thomas was able to wrestle the gun away. According to reports, police responded to a disturbance call and found Nina with a knife in her hand chasing Thomas around a vehicle. That counts as a disturbance. It is somewhat of a disturbance. Nina was later arrested. Thomas released a video in an attempt to get ahead of the story. Let's just see what he did as he posted to Instagram. So my agent just hit me and said that I'm going to be on uh, TMZ tomorrow from an altercation that happened with me and uh, Nina. I just wanted to get ahead of it. And uh, I mean, it's really not anybody's business. It me off that it got out, but it, it's the world we live in today. Instead of talking about us, just keep us in your prayers. Okay, there doesn't need to be a shirtless man doing that when he says it. Uh, Erica, how'd you take the apology? Or was it an apology? I don't care <laughs> about this apology. I don't care. The only thing, the only thing that I really care about is that people should understand if you choose someone who does not choose you back, you keep it moving. Mm. This situation was two seconds away from children losing both their father. I don't know, man. I don't know. It ain't worth it. It's cheaper to keep her. You know, I don't, you know, and, you saw what happened. I mean, I don't get that, brother. Yeah, our boy Snoop Dogg also got in trouble recently in a week. Allegedly cheating on his wife. Allegedly, I say. Um, Snoop issued a post on Instagram. You'll see with his wife where he said he loves her and she holds him down and she's my number one and all of that. That's because an Instagram model that looks trashy to me uh, said that Hunt Snoop was doing the uh, Hotel Motel Holiday Inn thing. Um, and Snoop didn't want the world to know. She came out and told the whole story. And Snoop denies it, of course, but I don't know. This is one of them Instagram models to sleep with everybody. You know, I don't know, man. It's like Snoop, Earl Thomas, all the brothers. I mean, it's not, you know, and I don't, the one thing I don't want to do is make it seem like it's just brothers because they all cheat. Everybody cheats. The Kennedys was bringing hoes in the White House back in the 60s. It's what they do. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying it's cool to cheat, but, uh, you know, Earl Thomas, he had a rough week. Let's put it that way, you know. And uh, I think we had some record-breaking stuff going on on the uh, Internet today. Yeah. Your boy... The snitch, the guy, she's 69, went live today on Instagram. The rat. the rat broke all kinds of records. I'll be honest with you. I don't give a damn about Takashi 69, but apparently you all do. He's got 15 million followers. 15 million followers. And... He broke. He broke the internet today. Two million people went on his on his live today. He said he was going live at three o'clock, and everybody signed on. Why? Like, I'm. I don't want to hear the story. Do you really care about Takashi Six Nine? Are you interested? You know, Fish. You called me earlier today. You like Takashi's going live, or did you see it? Uh I don't care. Maybe you do. Here, here's a little clip, a little sample of what he had. Get back to this. Hold on. Let me take all this jewelry off. I don't I don't give my old jewelry back to get new jewelry. This is a half a million dollars. Half a million. Look at the diamonds in them teeth. And nobody got this watch. Well, I think like two people got it. But if you don't got this watch, we can't beef. Me and you are not in the same bracket. At all. If you don't got this watch right here, this watch right here. This watch, over a half a million, why? We can't be. I broke the YouTube. I'm at 5 million views in one hour. Y'all can't even get 100,000 views. Listen, listen. We can't beef. There's no beef. I'm the king. Y'all know this. Listen, you know the legendary shit that I be talking about? You know why people so mad? Because they thought it was over for me. They counted me out. Oh, yo, you, yo, you rad it, it's over for you. Y'all could never... Y'all can never cooperate with the government and come back. Y'all can never do that. I'm a living legend at the age of 24 years old. You hear me? Look at the look at these 
six million. Shout out to Tory, shout out to Drake, shout out to Bad Bunny. Y'all niggas can never stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Look at this 1.6 million, 1.6 million. We can't be, me and y'all not the same. King of Wit, why I keep hearing King of New York, King of New York? Y'all not the Kings of New York. Look at the numbers. Oh, well, he winning right now, yo. Yo, how y'all let that kid rap, right? How y'all let him rap and come home to beat, still get more numbers than us, break all the records. Why y'all let, y'all can't stand it or something? Y'all can't stand it. Y'all can't, listen, you live your, you live your whole life, right? You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga. And, and, and this is me, this is real Danny shit. Fuck 6 9 right? This is some Daniel Hernandez shit. You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga, trying to be a stand-up tall, loyal guy. To try to shit on a kid like me, to be like, yo, fuck that, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat. To be like, yo, he ratted. To then a rat, a rat like me, to come home and still do more numbers than you, I would be mad too. I would be mad too. If a rat came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad too. I would. I, I promise you I would be mad. If a rat came home to, like, the way I came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad. I, you have every reason to be mad. Every reason. Because no matter how much dirt y'all throw on my name, no matter, and I've seen everything. Everybody want to be quiet now. For two years, y'all made fun of me. Y'all done made memes of me. Y'all done threw my name in the dirt. Yo, rat, bitch, fucking thrrr. Y'all didn't go with through what I went through, and I still came home, and I'm a legend at the age of 24 years old because I came home, and a rat is doing more numbers than you. I would be mad, too. I would. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. A real nigga wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I would go home sleeping like, why is this kid doing better than me? I wouldn't be able to sleep. I don't blame you, nigga. I don't blame you. I would be mad, too. I would be mad. If, if a nigga ratted and I spend my whole life trying to be a real nigga, I'd be mad too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I'm genuinely sorry. And for all, and, and another thing I want to address. For the King of New York shit, let's cut that out. Little boy, sit down. If you don't got this watch, I'm not beefing with anybody from New York if you don't got this watch. If you don't got this watch right here, you a little boy to me. I'll kiss you on your forehead. You a little boy. Sit down. King's home. It's over. It's over. Y'all got... And I get it. If you got one Richard Millie, nigga, this is all mine, nigga. No, I'm fronting them. Fucking get what, whatever y'all rappers do, nigga. It's mine, nigga. All four cars, Lambo, uh, uh, Lamborghini Aventador, Wraith, McLaren, G-Wagon. You name it, nigga. All mine. All bought out. Y'all can't fuck with me. Y'all can't compete with me. And I'm going to let y'all niggas know that. But I'm sorry. And, and now let me break it down. I'm sorry. I want to say that I'm sorry to my fans because you know what? It wasn't worth it. It wasn't. And I'm going to tell you what, if there is a street code, right, if there is a street code and there's something so, so-called so as loyalty and everything and no snitching and all of that, I get it, right? But where was the loyalty when you were sleeping with my baby mother? Where was the loyalty when you was caught on the wiretap trying to kill me? Where was the loyalty when you tried to kidnap my mother? Where was the loyalty when you were stealing millions of dollars from me? Where was that? So who broke it first? All right, I get it. Don't fight fire or fire. I'm sorry. But what did I do wrong? Be loyal to niggas that's fucking my baby moms. Be loyal to niggas that kidnap me, beat the shit out of me on video and everything. I'm supposed to be loyal to that? No, you know what? You know what it is? Y'all don't want to accept the fact that those is all true facts. Y'all don't want to accept. Y'all understand why I snitch. Y'all understand. Y'all don't want to understand. It's not that y'all don't understand. Y'all don't want to understand. Y'all don't want to understand that. Damn, this kid really was a, a he he moved their families out of poverty. He he paid for school for 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 all of the members, whatever. But he snitched on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, man. I know. I know, man. I know, man. This is a low moment <laughs> for the Jeff Fox show. I am so embarrassed right now that I let this dude ramble on and on and on on this show. I don't give a damn about Takashi Six Nine. I really, I don't get. Look at this watch, man. Oh my god. Oh my god. This, this is a low moment, fish. Why did we do that? Why did we air that segment? This is embarrassing. This is a low moment for the Jeff Fox show. Yeah, we have to. 
we messed up. We shouldn't have did that. We I apologize to, to, to the viewers, man. Hey, man, it's been a ball. I want to thank everybody, man, that chimed in. Make sure you share the link to the show. Uh, we're going to make this thing better. We're working on it. We don't have everything we, we need yet. So that's why I asked you to uh, cash app whatever you want to Radio Host One. You know, I appreciate everybody that sent uh, all the love last week. We appreciate whatever you do. Uh, keep sending it. Keep sharing the links to the show. Keep checking us out on Rep Your City TV. You know what I'm saying? You can get us again on your Roku TV, your Amazon Fire TV, your Apple TV, and Fullmont TV, which is national, which is worldwide. You can always find great programming here on Rep Your City TV. And, of course, uh, we will talk to you about what's popping in the real world. Here on the Jeff Fox Show. Sports talk, entertainment, politics, whatever it is. All right? We appreciate all of you. Fish and Grits, my producer, you did your thing, man. You did your thing today. Appreciate you as well. And uh, we about to get up out of here, man. But before we get, before we leave, I... Fight the power, baby! I want you to stay alive, black people. Do what you got to do. Make sure November 3rd, you vote. Rock the vote. You got to make a difference. That's where it starts. I'm Jeff Fox, and I'm out of here. Yeah, what's happening? It's the big boss, Ricky Ross. And right now, I got to salute my brother, none other than Jeff Fox. Ricky Ross, M.I.A. Yo, we paying homage to a real nigga, DJ Jeff Fox, forever. The Jeff Fox Radio Show.